we take a look at how these two former champions match up here tonight. Khan fighting at over 140 for the first time in his career, looking for another title shot as he clashes with the former two-time lightweight champion. Guys, it's funny, you both in the dressing room. You know what I expect. I'm a professor at all times. I bail on stressings. What's your end? Any questions? Let's go to work. Referee Marcus McDonald with the final instructions. We are set for 12 rounds or less. The return of the king, as they say, to the UK, Amir Khan, looking to continue his winning ways under new trainer Virgil Hunter. He is in the orange with black and green. He will face Julio Diaz, the former lightweight champion out of Coachella, California, the site of the music festival last weekend. He hopes to hit all the right notes in the upset in the making here tonight if he's successful wearing the blue with red and white. Kind of typically fast starter, so it'll, uh, let's see how he gets off this, this fight here in his hometown. Great crowd on hand in Sheffield, England, and we are underway with round one or home country, should I say. <laughs> you know, Diaz uh, switches a lot, so we may see him go from righty to lefty during the course of this fight, though he always starts out as a righty. You know, a, a little bit of a patient approach. Again, we saw it a little bit of it in, in uh, Khan's last fight against uh, uh, Molina. Uh, it seems like the Virgil Hunter approach set up everything off the jab Don't just jump right into combinations and I think it's intelligent, you know, Khan's chin is a little shaky So he has a great jab. Why not start measuring your opponent first with a jab before starting to put those blistering combinations? You keep yourself out of harm's way that way in San Antonio, Texas last weekend I had a chance to talk to Diaz's trainer and his brother Joel Diaz who told us told me that he was hoping that Diaz would get to check Khan's chin early Feeling that that would be a key in this fight. Khan started boxing when he was eight years of age. Went 101 and eight as an amateur. And at 17 was a silver medalist at the 2004 Olympics. The youngest British boxer ever to win a medal. Yeah, certainly a very talented fighter, a talented athlete. It's just a matter of keeping a, the right game plan for him. And I think he's been his own worst enemy. We see already the hand speed of Amir Khan. He's thrown some very good combinations. He has touched him to the right, but he hasn't been able to get anything off yet. Midway through the opening round. Khan working under Virgil Hunter, wanting to establish the jab more, as we saw there, the, the triple jab, and really be more patient. You know, and Julio Diaz is going to have to start finding a, a, some kind of counter for that jab or some kind of uh, decoy uh, or something. You know, he's, it's either your turn, my turn. This is what I call this right now. There's no countering. It's either Khan goes or Julio goes. And right now, Khan is going first many more times. Final 60 seconds of the opening round. A methodical start here in front of a raucous crowd in Sheffield, England. Khan able to get the jab through the guard of Diaz along the ropes. And again, notice him cutting the ring off there on Diaz. You know, it's a little subtle things Khan is starting to pick up. You know, you don't usually think of Khan as a pressure fighter, but there on the ropes, uh, Diaz tried to get away. Amir cut him off. And Al really finding a home for that jab early in this fight. It's a staple of his attack. And Paulie made the point to use that jab, but not always follow it in with the right hand that may make you lunge. Final 30 seconds of the opening round. Overhand right delivered by Khan. And again, being in the United Kingdom, any kind of shot that Khan throws, the crowd will react favorably. And we'll have to wait and see if that impacts the judges. Final 10 seconds of the opening round between Amir King Khan and Julio Kid Diaz at a catch weight of 143 pounds. Combination punching, not everything landing perfectly, but he's keeping Julio Diaz busy and not allowing Diaz to get any offense going. I thought, I thought there were some great instructions by Virgil Hunter there. 
keep being patient and the comp fight will naturally come to you. you know, just don't lose your patience, you're winning, you're doing good. Is basically what he's trying to say. You don't need to look for something that's not there. It'll, it, Julio Diaz will naturally become frustrated with the attack behind your jab. And he said, you know, Diaz is already looking for one shot. And he, pretty much that's what he did in round one. Let's see if it was just the kind of round where he's just looking to test out Khan. Or if the talk connects by Khan, and of course, listening to the sage advice of reigning trainer of the year, Virgil Hunter, we talked about Khan's illustrious amateur background. Julio Diaz started boxing at the age of six, had over 100 amateur fights. Yeah, Diaz need to get something started here in round two. Just gonna give Amir something to think about. Both these men have tasted the canvas. Khan's been down eight times in his career, and Diaz down nine times. So. Both have the tendency to go down, but no strangers to the canvas, huh? Yeah. The last time Khan went down was against Danny Garcia, losing his junior welterweight title and forcing him to make some changes in his camp. Firing Freddie Roach, bringing on Virgil Hunter, was really worked on making him more patient, better defensive fighter, and again, working behind that jab, as we've seen early in this contest. As Diaz along the ropes, Diaz moving laterally. The one punch that Diaz has been able to get up to the body and a right hand to the top of the head. The, the one punch that Diaz has been able to get in is the overhand right from time to time. And it's a shot that can at least make Amir think about throwing his jab as opposed to just doing it naturally. But he needs, oh. Lead left hook connects hook by Diaz. Does that look familiar? Somebody's landed that a couple times against Khan. Paulie talked about the tit for tat, nobody countering. That's changed in this round where now they are punching with each other. Final minute of the second stands up. Diaz wanting to clinch, close the gap. Khan content to keep the fight at distance, work behind the jab. He's been successful. There's the jab, double, triple jab. But doesn't follow with the right hand. There's a lead left hook to the body and a right hand to the body by Khan. There were the sneaky shots. Amir, an underrated body puncher. Diaz comes back with a right to the midsection. 30 seconds left in the frame. Oh, that's the right hand again. By Julio Diaz. He's found a home for that punch. And, you know, Khan doesn't get hit with that as much as he does the hook. But he has, has found uh, an answer there for himself, even if he's not landing enough to win rounds. While Khan is utilizing the jab, Pauly, as we head into the final few seconds, when we get to the third round, I want to ask you about the, the follow-up. The jab's been there, but not much in terms of the follow-up as we go to the next round. In the last round, Khan using the left hook, a double left hook, in fact, against Diaz. And you see, though, Amir Khan, look at how he did not jump in. He is now programmed by Virgil Hunter not to jump in after he lands big power punches. The Diaz overhand right, uh, that is a punch that, as we said in the first couple of rounds, has made a difference for him. That's Joel Diaz in the corner with his brother. Don't get careless. You're doing really, really good. It's about to step on. What's the caviete? All you have to do is put the lower down. Joel Diaz calling for the uppercut and Pauly going on what Al Bernstein even had to say, being patient, not jumping in. But when he's been effective with the jab, would you like to see the follow-up with the right hand? Well, I think it'll come as the fight progresses. I think right now he's sort of marinating Julio Diaz and seeing what kind of reaction he gets. You see, things like that, you, you start, he's going to start to catch on to the fact that Julio's trying to throw a right hand over the top of the jab. And these are things you start to catch on to when you're patient. You know, you start to see what the other guy's trying to do to you as well. You know, the problem I had in the Danny Garcia fight is he didn't catch on to the fact that Danny was punching with him. By being a jabber in the beginning of the fight, you can kind of take away what Julio does as well. Uh, in the total, we see that Amir Khan's so much busier than Diaz. They're landing at a similar percentage, but Khan throwing so many more that clearly he's controlled these first two rounds as we continue to update it live. It's the three to one ratio in favor of Khan. And Khan has averaged 35 jabs per round, so that's pretty darn good. 
Packing Diaz on the ropes. One minute gone here in the third round. We haven't seen Diaz switch to lefty yet. That may not be part of his game plan tonight. We'll see. Block that left hook by Khan. Khan circling in the center of the ring. Unleashes a three punch combination. I'd like to see, you know, speaking of combination punching, Marla, I'd like to see Julio try to get into a couple of combinations. It seems like, you know, Virgil Hunter was right. There's a good uppercut by Amir Khan. But Virgil Hunter was right in that when he told Amir, Julio's looking for one shot. And maybe Julio will be better, better or well off more to uh, try to throw some combinations in there. Maybe he'll land that one good shot he wants to if he tries a combination. Defense exhibited by Khan as he sidestepped the right hand from Diaz coming in, attacking the body again with that left hook. There's a nice one-two combination. So Khan putting together the combinations and beginning to take the fight to Julio Diaz with one minute remaining here in the third. Diaz is not a monstrous puncher, and so those overhand rights are not, so far, not bothering Khan, but he's has got them in over a couple of those jabs by Khan. There's a good hook. That's the, well, that's the punch that we know Khan has issues with. But again, just one at a time. You'd like to see who they'll try to be able to follow up. Well, you know what it is, too. Unless you hurt Khan, his fast feet get him out of there. There's a right hand by Diaz. Flurry of punches in close. Referee calls for the break. And there's his hands moving finally there on the inside. That's what you want to see from Julio Diaz. Under 30 seconds remaining in the third round with the majority of this fight taking place in the center of the ring. Diaz coming forward. Khan backs up. 15 seconds now left in the round. Khan using the jab as a range finder. We're headed to round four here in Sheffield. Landing the left hook. He's been using the leadoff left hook a lot, and that time, however, the left hook got him in trouble because Diaz was able to counter that punch and did so very effectively. The bell in round four underway. Amir King Khan in the orange with black and green versus Julio Diaz sporting the blue with red and white. It is a welterweight bout fought at a contract weight of 143 pounds. And Julio Diaz thinks of himself now as a welterweight. Khan thinks of himself, I think, more as a 140-pounder. Uh, and that's but, why they met halfway. Yeah, exactly. But he would go to 147 if there was a major fight out there. Right now, uh, more focused, perhaps, on the 140-pound division. Yeah, one of the deepest in the sport. Diaz along the ropes. Khan flashes the jab, has him in the corner. Comes in, puts together a three-punch combination, culminating with a left hook to the side of the head. Oh, nice three-punch combo from Diaz that he pops Diaz, or Khan's head back as we take a look at the unofficial scoring for this fight, courtesy of our Showtime crew. We all uh, completely agree, and that's not shocking, that those first three rounds all went to Khan. I don't think there was one close enough to even think about giving to Diaz. I agree there. Julio has a couple of seconds here and there where he does okay, but for the most part, it's Amir controlling the rounds. A hard guy to win rounds against Amir Khan because he's busy, he knows how to use his jab, he knows how to set the pace at the pace he wants it. And, and he's got that height. His trainer Virgil Hunter wants him to punch coming off the angles, utilizes footwork more, wanting to befuddle Diaz. One of the headlines in this fight is that Khan, I think, has thrown a better left hook than we've seen in some other fights. It's short, it's compact, and it's landing very well. There's a left hook. Oh, oh, down goes Khan! It's a lunging left hook, Al, like you a said. A lunging that. left hook by Diaz and... Khan goes down for the ninth time in his career here in round four. His Achilles.
Achilles heel, the left hook by Diaz. Now had said that's the punch he does get hit with, and it lands again. And you can tell Diaz was looking for it the whole fight. He had lunged in a couple of times with that. And the crowd in Sheffield beginning to rally behind Khan. Nervous moments for Amir Khan. His career could ill afford a misstep. Diaz, an 8 to 1 underdog, coming into this fight. A loss against Diaz would most likely end his career as an elite fighter. He has been on the canvas here in round four, and with 15 seconds left, wants to ride out the rest of the frame before regrouping in between rounds. Diaz on the attack. And he doesn't seem terribly hurt. He definitely felt the shot, obviously. a good one and then following up with the left hook after so the fact that there were two that landed well is part of what that did one the landed damage. good though that first one yeah. that second one didn't land as clean but that first one was a good hook yeah. and we shouldn't underestimate the right hand that landed on the side of the head yeah. as well but that give Amir credit he rose on better legs than he tends to rise up from when he gets up from a knockdown very good point fifth round underway here in Sheffield England Welterweight action between Amir Khan, who went down for the ninth time in his career in round four, and Julio Diaz looking to build on that round. The plot has thickened. Yes, it has. Moro Ranello, Al Bernstein, and Pauli Malinaji calling the action on this special edition of Showtime Boxing. Khan with the right hand through the guard. Pops the jab twice. Taking a look at the unofficial scoring after four rounds of action. As expected, we all scored that a two-point round for uh, Julio Diaz, and I didn't see it. Uh, Paulie, I wouldn't think you could score that as a one-point round. No, no, no. I, I, I agree with everyone else there. I want to see how Julio Diaz follows up the round after a knockout, and I want to see how Amir Khan comes back this well, round. It's so very... far, so good for Amir Khan in the opening minute as he's taking the fight back to Diaz as we take a look at the show stats. Total power punches in the fight. At the edge, of course, still to Khan, but the two or three that made a difference were those ones that knocked him down. And uh, Khan himself has landed many good left hooks in this uh, fight. And very aggressive here in round five after being down in the previous round. One thing I don't like Julio Diaz, when Khan goes for his walks, Julio is not cutting him off. He should at least put that mental pressure on him to cut him off. So as you can see, Khan can circle as he wants to. Julio Diaz should be cutting him off. Even if he's not throwing, cut him off and kind of give him that panic. And there he did a little well, bit. There he did, yeah. He heard you, Paulin, all the way from across the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Left hook by Khan. And Amir Khan won all those first three rounds, and he is boxing effectively. So this isn't, yeah. he's not in a panic mode, but he knows that this young man can send him to the canvas and he knows who Diaz is very serious here about he's, getting this win. He's recovered quite well thus far in the final minute of the fifth round and Khan now clinching with Diaz. And, th and that's a great point now you know I, I, don't, I wouldn't say he's panicking but Julio Diaz can bring some panic out of him if he can continue the and momentum. Khan digging away at Diaz's body with the right hand. And this round has not been a monstrously big round for Khan. He's probably winning this round, and there's a good example why, but uh, he's not, he hasn't dominated it completely like he did the first three. But again, Julio not cutting the ring off. He's yeah. trying to pressure come forward, but he'd be well advised to cut the ring off, and it's allowing him here to find the corners and turn. Very good point. Khan keeping his right hand 
Stapled to the side of his head more. Very cognizant of that left hook as we are through five in Sheffield, England. Shots of Virgil Hunter thinking that he hurt Diaz. It might have been with that straight right hand there. And uh, Khan certainly getting back on the winning side in that round. Yeah, and it could just be Virgil Hunter trying to give him some positive reinforcement to believe in what he's doing. Don't lose sight of the game plan. That's conceivable. 21 of Diaz's 29 knockouts have come within the first five rounds. He scored two in the sixth for Khan. 17 of his 19 KOs have occurred inside eight rounds. We are in the sixth as Khan catches him with another left hand, circling away. Doubles up on the jab. Diaz standing right in front of him, gets tagged with the right hand, now along the ropes, does a good job of avoiding the left by Khan. There's a sequence where you can feel Amir Khan thinking, and, and that's what they want him to do. He landed that barrage of punches, wheeled away, and said, okay, we're going to restart everything and push the restart button. And it's also something that happens when you land a consistent jab, when you have a good jab. You can start leading with the right hand. The guy won't, won't really see it coming. He won't anticipate it. The jab from Diaz has been absolutely non-existent. There well, There's guess what, he me too. And follows up with an overhand right. I think Julio's hearing us from across the pond tonight. Yes, he is. We have ESP going on. But it has been an underused weapon for him. Left hook raises the chin. There's a double jab by Khan. Counter left hook by Diaz. Minute and a half remaining in the sixth round. But again, Khan able to get on his bicycle, move laterally, Polly, as you were mentioning, really utilizing the real estate. And that's one of his better weapons. Amir has great legs, so why not use them if he can? And especially at Julio, a lot of times, he only cuts the ring off in spurts. He, does, he, he allows Amir to turn the corner, so if you have the real estate and you can use it, and you have the legs for it, go ahead. Combination there by Khan. Nice one-two combo, and finish it off with a left hook to the side of the head. Under a minute remaining now in the round. Diaz just plodding forward, goes downstairs with the left, fades. Not a lot of counter punching in effect either so far. You're right. Khan leaving the left hand hanging. In the front of Diaz, there's the one-two combination and shoots out a nice left hand, catches Diaz on the face with 20 seconds remaining in the round. The difference in hand speed is the difference in this fight right now. With Khan having the big ends. And yet it has been Khan who has been down in round four of this fight. Yet doing well for the majority of the rest of this bout. by Julio Diaz in the last round. That was the moment we talked about early in the round, but it was probably his only really good sequence in the round. And Khan coming back with his own combination work, missing with the first two there, but then following with the third jab. And so, good job there for him. And you're gonna get your head, okay? Just combinations, put your jaw inside your shoulders, okay? Thanks with the feet.
We are at the halfway point of this 12-round welterweight battle between Amir King Khan and Julio the Kid Diaz as Khan has been down 140 into round four from two left hooks that landed cleanly. But save for that dramatic moment, Khan has uh, done what is necessary, Polly, to, to build up the points. Yeah, and though he gets touched there again with another left hook from Diaz, and has to be very leery of that punch. Well, yeah, Julio is definitely a live underdog. He's showing himself that he, he's not going over there just for a paycheck. He's trying to win. For Amir Khan, this fight, we talked about the significance of this. It, it, a win here is imperative for him. The idea that down the road later this year, he's getting married, then he will celebrate Ramadan where he will not fight. And the idea is he may fight against one of those 140 pounders uh, that will be fighting not only tonight, but also when Lucas Matisse fights Peterson, Lamont Peterson. And the winner of those two fights will fight possibly and Khan may face the winner. So there's a lot at stake here for Amir Khan. A clash of heads there. Diaz trying to counter with the right hand. Khan tags him with the right hand. Minute and a half remaining in the seventh round. Seems to be a cut on Diaz's right eye. Gets tagged with the left, which can only exacerbate the uh, cut on the right eye of Diaz. And when you have as good a jab as Khan, when you are cut, that's not good. <laughs> because he's going to keep pecking away. Unofficial scores at the midway point. Not surprising that we're in total agreement because the rounds Khan has won have been pretty definitive. And of course, the one 10-8 round in round four in which Diaz scored a knockdown. Left hook connects by Khan. The counter left from Diaz. Now the one thing Amir Khan can't do is get in love with that left hook because uh, right there Diaz tried oh, to counter. Right hand and a left hook by Khan that scores. A good point out. You shouldn't hook with a hooker. Yes. I'm not saying that Diaz is a hooker, but Khan shouldn't be putting himself at risk too no, much. No, he's not known for that, but tonight he's throwing that punch and it's the one punch that has done damage. Mm -hmm. seconds left in the seventh round. Diaz coming forward gets popped with the straight right through the high defense. Three punch combination by Diaz. Khan circles away from the ropes to avoid any further attack. side and a nice left hook. This is a demonstration. This was a sequence in the middle of the round where Diaz gave as good as he got and it shows again that he is a dangerous opponent in there. Khan with the hand speed landing over the lazy jab of Diaz. Here again, hook right hand. Another another shot by Khan. And when you have a good jab, Khan tends to set up, set up everything off the jab and then once in a while he'll lead with that left hook right hand. I just need to stop fucking breaking him from the body. Diaz has a cut just underneath the right eyebrow as we head to round number eight. And with Khan having already been down in round four, knowing what's at stake, knowing the future of Amir Khan as a premier fighter, do you anticipate any adjustment in strategy? Knowing that he's building up points, do you think he's going to go to even more of a defensive shell here, Paul? Um, I wouldn't say defensive shell, but I don't expect him to change. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. He went down, but he, he's regained control of the fight. You know, some people might say it's a bit too, too patient of an approach. He, uh, he should go for the kill here. But, you know, this is a learning process for Amir Khan in that he's learning to become more patient with Virgil Hunter. It may not serve him so great here in that he could go for the kill, but in the future, being more patient will help him because if he was fighting a deadlier fighter, he may get hurt. Well, he just got it with the left hook. There's a left Khan. hook by Khan in return and puts together a one-two combination. Of course, being back on UK soil for the first time in two years, I'm sure he wants to put on a bit of a show for his home country, but 
his career at this point he needs to accrue the victories to remain relevant and Julio Diaz hanging tough here as we pass the one minute mark of the eighth round and it's really not a, a defense first posture for Khan even though he's trying to be uh, at least careful and a smart fighter in there plenty of action in this fight and lots of good exchanges double jab followed up by an overhand right by Khan as we take a right, here's the total punches Khan landing at a, a about the same percentage but he is throwing so many more he's you know almost doubled the amount of punches thrown by Diaz Diaz's corner wanted him to work the body then move upstairs and that's the thing about Diaz working the body. He's got to get close in order to work right. it. And that's easier said than done against a guy with the legs of Khan, especially when Julio's not cutting off the ring. And there's the body work as soon as he does get close. Triple right hand to the side of the body, but Khan again able to move away with under a minute remaining in the eighth round. Couple of right hands, three right hands by Khan. Julio Diaz is a solid fighter, always has been, even in the moments when he's got seven losses in his career, but he knows how to fight. And I'm going to tell you, when he's at a bit of a higher weight, that's the kind of action he's capable of, and he's throwing some malicious body punches. Yeah, yeah, man, he came to fight tonight. I'm he's not, I don't have him winning, but I'm still impressed with the effort. Some great exchanges in this round, and I think he has made Khan feel his power in this round. And this is the first round and now, Diaz is on a hunt to win. And he motions for Khan to bring it, and the action picking up here with 20 seconds left in the eighth round. Referee Marcus McDonald admonishing Diaz. For what? I don't know. Maybe low blows. It's hard to tell. Momentum. Ten seconds now left in the round. Left hand by Khan. Diaz coming forward as we head to the ninth. Now, this was a round that I gave to Julio Diaz, and I thought that he had good moments like that left hook. And remember, it was the left hook that sent Khan down early in the fight in round four. And he, that's kryptonite for him. You know, he gets hit with those hooks, and Diaz going a little bit low, making it a rough fight. I think Julio Diaz had an important round for himself in round eight. Entertaining fight here in Sheffield, England, between Julio Kid Diaz, who's Seven losses include four via form of knockout and Amir Khan, who was down in the fourth round, the ninth time in his career, but holding steady here as we begin round nine. Diaz now putting the pressure on Khan. Khan utilizing his lateral movement, circling to his right. And has that right glove stapled to his cheek. Very concerned with the left hook that dropped him in the fourth. And there's the left hook from Diaz on cue. First moment for a second, Diaz switching to the left-handed stance. He's not done it in this fight, and I think the reason he hasn't done it is because as a righty, you can land that left hook, it's closer to Khan. Why would you become a lefty and make it harder? That's a good point. When the, when the kryptonite punch has been the hook, yeah. you want to give yourself a chance to land it as best possible. See, I must know boxing. Could you agree with me, Paul? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little anyway. This is, I think, a very important round in this fight because I thought Diaz won the last one and got himself in some ways back into this fight. And we'll see if he can continue to get a little momentum going. But again, I, you have to be impressed with Amir not abandoning the game plan. Yes, even, if, even if Julio physically roughed him up a little bit last round, Amir still trying to yep. stay on the outside, staying with the jab. Oh, and he gets touched there with the left hand again by Diaz. He does get touched here and there, but otherwise he's, yep. he's fainting, he's jabbing, he's picking his spots. Still a good round. He has to be very careful, though, in these exchanges with Diaz because he is dropping his hands, leaving them open to those counter shots upstairs. Well, Julio, again, no shortage of effort from Julio Diaz, even this round. And you can tell he's trying to set up that hook again. He's ducking down, trying to get himself in a position to come up with that left hook. Now Diaz works the body, then clinches. 
Referee McDonald calling for the break. And as we head into these final rounds, you have to ask yourself too, if Julio Diaz makes this a super competitive fight in the last few rounds, what does that do to Amir Khan in terms of the perception? A win is a win is a win, but still. Yeah, especially considering he's been down in this fight. Yep. Left hook blocked by Diaz. Very close round here in round nine. Again, 30 the, seconds remaining in the night. Again, when Amir is doing what he does best, the thing about even if you're blocking his offense, he's preventing you from getting off any punches. Good when point. Amir is having a good round, you rarely see that. Oh, and off. he's tags Con or Diaz with the left. connecting but power not really deterring Julio Diaz from standing in front of him. Interesting round of boxing. Very difficult time. The only time you get some if you have your hands down. Keep this up, stay in the legs, breathe deep. Good job, baby. Good job. Yeah, he's very tight. Diaz attacking, though, as Paulie pointed out, not really cutting the ring off. They're off balance when he was hit by Khan. But always looking for the left hook is Diaz. That time he landed it to the body. You could see the wheels turning as he tried to get it to the head. Khan flipped him with the left hook. Okay, don't run over him. Punch into him. The first two will come here and three and four will come to the head. Okay? And keep that lick going real quick. Stay on your feet. Stay on your legs. Come on. The bell and round 10. We hope you're enjoying this co-production with the feed provided to us by Box Nation in the UK from Sheffield, England. It's Amir Khan in the orange with black and green and Julio Diaz. In the blue with red and white, Diaz, a former two-time lightweight champion. Khan, a former WBA and IBF 140-pound champion. And a counter left hook lands by Diaz to the chin of Khan, who's coming forward. He may have been hurt. That was a big left hook. Yeah, and Amir holding on, and he's holding on again in the, in the follow-up. And it's early in this round. <laughs> Just really avoid really that lunging left hook by Diaz. <laughs> Air conditioning in Sheffield. Now it's Khan backing up Diaz. The this, ball here. This is the posture Khan doesn't want against Peterson. Got in trouble by being on the ropes. And, he, and being too straight up on the inside. Yes. He wants a small little work. He's got to bend his knees a little bit. Right hand by Diaz over top of Khan's left. One two combination by Diaz. Not much offense coming from Amir Khan here in this round. Diaz is smothering him with punches here with a minute 40 left in the 10th round. Khan comes back with a combination, the majority of which misses. Left hook blocked by Diaz. I'll tell you, Diaz seems to have a lot of confidence after winning that big hook at the beginning of the round. He lands a left hook behind the guard of Khan. Khan doubling up on the jab. But Diaz appears to be gaining some confidence here in round 10. Walking down Khan along the ropes. Right hand to the head and the left hook. There's a jab from Khan. For the first time in this fight, Khan is getting caught on the ropes. One minute remaining in the 10th. In this round, you see the difference in power punches. Dramatic for uh, Julio Diaz. Five seconds left in the tenth. And depending on how people score the ninth oh, round. Oh. Right hand tanks con now. Go ahead. Depending on how they score that last round, this one's an important round. Diaz getting off much more this round though, Al. I, this seems to be a Diaz round all the way. Oh, Mixing yeah. in the uppercut as well. And left uppercut up the middle connected by Diaz. With 20 seconds left in what has been Julio Diaz's best round since dropping Khan in the fourth. Be very interesting to see what Virgil Hunter says in between rounds to Khan. The 11th round is straight ahead.
head here in Sheffield. When you when you're pushing them back, dude, you have to lower that. To... A round that Diaz will put in his scrapbook. That tremendous left hand early in the round stunned Diaz or stunned Khan, and again throughout the round, that left hook was a signature punch for Diaz. And when he followed with the right, he was extra effective. A terrific round for Julio Diaz. Back, okay. When he comes, you turn him. You crate back and you keep him backing up a little, okay? Don't let him come forward, okay? When you put your combinations together, do not punch from here. Drop down and punch into the target. You understand? Ten seconds, corners. I'm real proud of you. Now I want you to finish this intelligent. I want you to finish it smart. And I want you to finish it like the champion you are. Come on. Trainer Virgil Hunter becoming de facto uh, motivational speaker as well. That's good corner work because that was important as an emotional uh, device, I think, for his fighter. I think that was excellent corner work. Our unofficial scoring, as we will look at it, uh, and Steve Farhood has a bigger margin. He and Paulie have it 97-92. I've got it for Khan 96-93. Now, I scored the last round for uh, Diaz, and I know you did too as well, Paulie. And uh, Steve Farhood, uh, like you, with a wider margin. Oh! Furious exchange, and Diaz catches up with a one-two combination. Khan seems to be staggered moving in, but recovers and backs away. He's got to keep his chin down when he's trading punches like that. He's basically standing straight up and trading and getting into exchanges. So some tense moments in round 10 for Amir Khan. Plenty of time left. Pocket. Diaz continues to walk him down, exactly what Khan's corner didn't want him to do. But good defense there by Khan, but again, Khan oh, and he gets Khan on the left. Khan is hurt, guys. Another strong start for Julio Diaz here in round 11. Midway point of the round, working the body with a couple of right hands. Khan on his bicycle, gets tagged upstairs with the left and right. Comes back with a straight right through the guard, but has now abandoned the jab. And Diaz committing still to body work. Very smart work by Julio Diaz. Took the words out of my mouth, Al. He's a veteran. He's a veteran, and he's been reborn at a higher weight. And he's been working oh. in the gym a lot harder. He's gotten kind of trouble again. And I tell you, if this was a bigger puncher, I don't know that Khan would have survived tonight, guys. He's taking some shots. Final 45 seconds of the 11th round. Another strong stanza for Julio Diaz. Khan trying to work behind the jab. Has to avoid that left hook. Moving backwards. Left hook to the body by Diaz. 30 seconds left in the round. Khan with a lead left hook. And Diaz keeping his hands up as he comes in. He's thinking defense, so Khan's not able to hit him well with counter punches. Ducks down, goes to the body with the left hand, does Diaz. Scoring with more accuracy, more volume. Julio Diaz here in round 11. We're off to the final round. Another great round for Julio Diaz. And what else? The left hook lands. That one stunned Khan. And then he hit him with that overhand right. And that was early in the round where things were very dangerous for Amir Khan. Khan, who is a warrior, make no mistake, was able to get through the rest of the round and not go down, which is significant because that could have then been a 10-8 round. Someone could still score scored in the 10-8 round, but this barrage did not send Khan to the canvas. And you see in one of the replays, Khan's father putting his hands on his head, basically saying, what is he doing trading like that? Breathe deep, breathe deep. He doesn't have the energy to do it unless you let him land that good first one. Do not. 
The 12th and final round, the crowd in Sheffield on its feet, and this is really an illustration of what makes Amir Khan so exciting. Yes. The fact that he is vulnerable, the fact that he does have flaws, but that he has a lot of heart, and is always game, and Diaz, a quick start here in round 12, and despite Diaz never really being in any danger of getting knocked down, Khan may have scored enough to win on points if it goes to the scorecards, despite being down in round four. Well, we know Diaz won the last two rounds, and he had a 10-8 round in round four. It's what happened in all those other rounds, and our unofficial scoring tells us that I have Khan closer by two points, but Polly and Steve, Paulie, you've got him by four points. Mm -hmm. Diaz being warned for punches to the back of the head. I hope that this referee does not jump in with a point deduction against anybody. No one merits it in this fight. Khan coming forward with a right hand. Watches the jab. Diaz with a couple of lefts. And I, like the, the left hook. I like the instructions Virgil Hunter gave him here. He doesn't have the energy unless you let him. Basically telling him, don't allow him to put you in positions to land big shots. Well, he is being put in position now, though, fighting valiantly off the ropes, but it's Diaz with punches in bunches. The first half of this round, fairly close. Khan has stemmed the tide a little bit, and this could be a pivotal round. It, it, even though our scoring has Khan ahead, you never know. Khan's chin is there to be checked as Diaz comes forward. Khan with the jab. And remember, a knockdown in this round would be huge if Diaz got one because he had the one in round four that was a 10-8 round. Diaz think, continues to hunt down Khan. Khan pivots away back to the center of the ring. I think either way, Julio Diaz has acclaimed himself well tonight. You bet. Uppercut by Diaz. Final minute of action here in Sheffield, England. The return of Amir Khan to the United Kingdom. His home base, the first time in two years, and Julio Diaz is giving him a very tough test. Right now, Julio Diaz should crank up those hooks like he never has before. He's got to throw that punch. And another it's there. punch yeah. of Diaz digging away to the body. And I should have prefaced that with an unexpected tough test as Khan, a huge underdog, coming into this fight. Under 30 seconds now left in the round and the bout. A close round 12. Final 15 seconds of the bout. Khan with the left jab. And yeah. here in Sheffield, England, on this special edition of Showtime Boxing, we are headed to the judges' scorecards. Khan versus Diaz. statement of the year uh, and Diaz's folks believe he might have stolen a decision here I should say stolen uh, but the fact is it turned out to be a very very competitive fight and round 12 a pivotal round and I think round nine and around nine and eight pivotal rounds our scoring I had it a bit closer at 115 113 whereas Polly and Steve had it by three points and this kind of action in the last round made that round I think a, a pretty tough round to score and Diaz doing a lot of good work on the inside but Khan punched back more in round 12 than he did in the 11th and the 10th and what does this win do for Amir Khan if it is a win raise more questions it <laughs> may yes but you made the salient point, Marl. No matter what, this man, Amir Khan, is entertaining to watch. You always want to see him in the ring. The punch numbers demonstrate, most importantly, that Khan was much busier. And that may be what ultimately got him this fight. And the power numbers of Khan clearly were impressive in that fight even though Diaz landed the ones that hurt the most
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 pulsating rounds of boxing here are the judges' score totals. Judge Bill Edwards scores the contest 114 to 113. Judge Steve Gray scores the contest 115 to 113. And Judge Terry O'Connor scores the contest 115 to 112. All three judges, the winner by way of unanimous decision from Bolton England, Amir King Khan. Amir Khan escapes with a razor thin unanimous decision victory over a very game Julio Diaz. I got I want to say those three judges, all from England, called the fight correctly. I wasn't expecting that. I got to say, good call by those judges. They were right in the wheelhouse of where this fight probably was. And a couple of things about this fight. Amir Khan gets an important win, and Julio Diaz has resurrected his career. So an entertaining effort that saw Julio Diaz knock down Khan in the fourth, but Khan able to do enough to warrant the unanimous decision win improving to 28 and 3 in front of his adoring UK crowd. Let's go to the official scoring for what turned out to be a sensational scrap. These three official judges paid attention to this fight and I think scored it correctly. The widest margin with Terry O'Connor, the smallest with Phil Edwards. And unofficially on our Showtime scoring, Paulie and Steve saw a slightly wider margin. I had a two-point uh, win for Amir Khan. Let's go to the interview I mean, with Amir Khan. Rob Walker handling the proceedings. We'd expect from you. It was heart, it was passion, and it was so, so dramatic. It was, you know, um, I mean, who's a tough guy? He's been in many world title fights. We trained for, we trained very hard for this fight. We knew it was going to be tough. We knew Julio's, you know, going to come in and want to win this fight. Uh, but you know, it was great. It was a great performance in there. He, he was tough. He was in front of me all the way through the fight. And um, you know, I had to listen to Virgil in the corner, and we got the win. When you were down in the fourth, how much did you have to fight your instinct to get back in and, and to sit back and work on the jab and try and give yourself the recovery time to get back in the fight? No, you know what? I remember exactly everything that happened in that round. I mean, I was also off balance and he caught me while I was off balance. And I mean, I couldn't get my stance back. I went down and I thought, you know what? He's gonna come rushing back at me as um, soon as I was back up again. And that's why I kept moving to recompose myself. Um, but you know, that's what happens. I mean, there are little things that we're going to work on when we go back in the gym. It's been a journey for you since you last fought in the UK, and I know you got a massive reception from the crowd. What was it like performing back home for the first time in two years? It was amazing. You know, I want to thank my UK fans. I mean, they've always been supportive. They've always been great. And it was just awesome to come back home, you know, put, put, to put on a performance. And it was a great performance. I mean, Julio come to win. And, it, I mean, you know, I was happy with the way the crowd supported me and they were behind me all the way. The last three rounds, were you feeling the pressure? Because it looked as though at one stage he was tiring, but he just kept on coming back. That's right. You know, Julio was tough. I mean, he's a, he's a tough, tough Mexican fighter. And he wouldn't take a step back. I mean, these Mexicans are tough. He, you could, that's why he's two-time world champion. He's got a lot of experience and he knew what to do in there. But, you know, we just stuck to the game plan with Virgil and uh, we just kept going and kept going. Let's have a word from you, Virgil. What's your assessment on that dramatic atmospheric evening? Well, I think the main thing that we had to, that we proved, we've been saying all along that Julio Diaz was gonna be a tough fight. You got a two-time world champion. They could call up a great fight at any time. That's why I told Amir, my job is to never listen to the critics and whoever want to put a world champion down. But you can't put a world champion down. He came to the UK to win. He was very determined. And it took the smarts of Amir and the best of Amir to pull this fight out. I'm very proud of the decisions that he made, particularly when he went down. I'll just tell it like it is. He was tripped and hit. I don't want to take nothing away from Julio. He went down, he felt the punch but he was a little off balance and he proved it when he got back up and was in the fight. But we, um, he fought a smart, intelligent fight. It just goes to show that when he's in a crisis, like every single fighter in a fight is gonna be in, he made sound decisions tonight.
Do you think he's learned the lessons? Well, these are the lessons you want him to learn because see, now he's been in a situation where he's thought this thing out instead of thinking with his heart, he thought with his brains. And so that's going to make him even tougher and determined to be. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the decisions that he made in a tough, tough fight with a very determined ex-champion, Julio Diaz. He gets all the credit. Let's try and get a word with Richard Schaefer if we can. Richard, it was an absolutely superb evening. Everybody was living every punch. What was your assessment? Well, first of all, sometimes you have fights where there are really no losers. Tonight, there were no losers. Julio Diaz came to fight and he fought in a very a great, great fight. Amir fought a great fight. These are two entertainers. They came to entertain. They came to entertain the crowds. So uh, the big winner here is the crowd which saw it live and the people which are going to see it on TV. Saw it on TV. Who's next for Amir? Well, we're going to sit down with his team and going to see uh, who, we, who we want to do. I know he's going to be taking some time off. He'll be back in December. Julio, you played your part in a magnificent contest there. You had Amir down in the fourth. You rocked him in the 11th. Did you think that you'd done enough to win that fight? You know what? I think I gave up too many rounds trying to break him down. And like I said in the conference, this guy has a lot of heart. People don't see that, but he does. He was hurt almost a whole fight and uh, never gave up. Anybody else would have took a knee. So I, gave, I, I, think I feel like I gave up too many rounds trying to break him down, hoping he would quit or go down. And uh, he, he landed on his feet. So, Richard, how long is it going to be before we see Amir going for a world title again? Uh, I think it's going to be safe to say in his next fight he'll be fighting for a world title in December. Virgil, how much have you enjoyed working with this guy and, and how much more is there to come? Well, there's a lot more work to do. The enjoyment speaks for itself. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad to have made his acquaintance. We still have a lot of work to do, but the good thing is he's learning on the job, and that's the most important thing. So the next fight out, I expect him to be even more intelligent, and we'll go back to the drawing board and work on these things. But like I said, he fought an ex-champion who knows how to fight, who has a lot of experience. He came from a fighting family. He has more experience than Amir does as far as in fights. You see, he has much more experience. So he used his experience and picked his shots, but Amir is learning. And when he gets there where Julio was and Julio is, then we're gonna see a fearsome fighter. He's got a way upside. I say he's about at 70% of what he can really do. I mean, we'd waited two years to see you fight in the UK. Is this the last time we've seen you fight over here, or is there an option for you to come back again in the future? I wish it's not the last time. I wish I could keep coming back and fighting for my home fans. I mean, it's amazing to fight in England, but it just depends on the fighters out there. I mean, most of the world champions are in America. I don't think they'd want to travel. Um, but, you know, I'm going to keep on trying to get the fight back in UK, but I just want to say thanks to Julio Diaz because he put on a great performance. And if this is my last fight in the UK, what a fight it was. Well, it was an absolutely enthralling contest, Amir. It's been brilliant to see you back in the UK. Thanks for coming and good luck for your next fight. Thank you very much.